What's good, everybody? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson back at it again with another episode here on the YouTube channel. Make sure that you guys like, hit the bell, and subscribe. But today, man, I have a very talented brother. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man. Um, let you guys let him tell you what what kind of company he runs and and uh, what his channel's all about. Go ahead, brother. Hey, what's up, people? How y'all doing? This is Kay. Uh, I work in the human service field. I've uh, been working in the human service field for almost 12 years. I have a channel where I focus on business and and uh, startups and uh, side hustles, whatever to make your life, uh, to make money. If you're looking to make money, if you've lost your job. So that's what my channel is all about. It's about self-improvement, um, you know, putting money in your pocket. All right, brother, and you do a really good job, and we're going to be talking about that on the next Thanks. episode. Um, and so, I, I really, I really thank you. I, 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 I knew, I knew of you, and then actually, a subscriber um, sent me your channel, and I'm like, oh yeah. And then we start talking. I'm like, yeah, okay, I do know you. I remember your channel, man. And yeah, you do a really good job trying to give opportunities for brothers. But you work in, in the human services field, and you have one video, man, that was really impactful. Yes. about this african-american brother man that had yes. seven kids correct by seven different women correct and no job no job wow i i brother just you can go ahead and talk to me about you know how you met this particular brother all right so um i started my career i was working in social services as a case manager um so when when you work in social services you get a caseload of young adults both male and female so i had this young particular brother uh when i got when i got him on my caseload he was he was about 16 15. um you know just working with him throughout the the years um he was in foster care he was in a group home then i had to move him from a group home into uh a family's home which is with his grandmother uh when he was 18 he had his first kid and I was, you know, talking to him, mentoring him, trying to get him into many programs out there. He dropped out of school. He, he loved to sell drugs, you know. Um, he's out there in the streets. He had his first kid. And I'm always, like, trying to encourage him, encourage him to, you know, do well. But unfortunately, he doesn't He doesn't really like to listen to anybody. Um, he had his first kid, then he had his second kid, uh, then he had his third kid, and he aged out of foster care. And sometime last year, I, I seen him, you know, because sometimes I am in the city of Baltimore. I do some nonprofit work in, in the city of Baltimore. So I came across him, you know, and um, he told me that he had four additional kids. I said, wow, he even had two kids in the same month. Whoa, um, seven, two yeah. kids in the same month? In the same month. Okay. And, you know, child support is really, really, um, you know, they, they, they're trying to get some money from him because, uh, you know, he has to take care of seven children. Uh, he has no job. Uh, so what I did when I when I seen him in, in the community, I gave him a few numbers, uh, maybe a, a number for a GED course that he can take, a number for a job, because I know somebody that will hire him without, you know, a GED or any experience. Um, he just have to call the person. He didn't do any of it. You know, he didn't he didn't make the phone call. He didn't even follow up. Then I called him and I met him in the city again and he was asking for help. I'm like, dude, I, I'm giving you all the numbers and the resources you need, but you're not following up. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. And guess what? He still has a girlfriend. He has a girlfriend and he's living with the girlfriend. Sometimes he stay with his girlfriend or he stay with his grandmother. But this and this girl knows that he has seven baby mamas and seven children. Let me let me kind of go back to that <clears throat> because we, we 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 speculate this all the time, you know, on in the black in the black male uh, conversations of black YouTube because yeah. you know with, with the Kevin Samuel situation getting so um, viral out there with a, with a high value man discussion and things like that and you know and then the sisters are talking about they can't find you know a lot of guys you know like what Kevin Samuels was talking about. Mm -hmm. But and then but on on the other hand, you have women who knows that the man is not motivated to work, mm -hmm. not looking for a job, mm -hmm. 
has seven kids by seven different women. He hasn't. He, he's not like he's lying about this. He told her. Yeah, he told me. And the, when he had his first kid, I told him. I said, "Look, he's a good-looking guy. You know, very good-looking guy. And he he love you know. And the girls love him. You know, very tall, very handsome. But um, I, I told him that you have to get your stuff together. Um, you have to focus on getting your life together, getting your GED." Uh, getting a job because here's the thing, O'Shea. In in the state of Maryland, if you're in foster care, right, you can go to college till you're 25 for free. Wow. Yes. So he can go to grads. He can go to undergrad and do grad school. You know what I'm saying? Because I've had kids go to go to school, get their four year degree, and go to grad school and get their um, master's degree. You have the opportunity if you're if you're in foster care. He didn't want any opportunity. He didn't mm. take up any of the opportunities. All the free trainings, like the free IT trainings they had for, for, for the youths, he didn't take any of them. The youth works, the jobs, he didn't take any of them. So now you're about 25, 24, you are crying to me like you need help. And I've given you all the resources and you still don't want to take it, you know? But you still have girls, you still have women, and they know that you have children and they're still involved and not one of them could say you know what i don't want this right now you know what i'm saying or none of them are encouraging him his family's not encouraging him or pushing it you know so there are brothers out there just like that and there's some women that will actually accept this type of behavior let me let me talk to you about this because you you made an interesting point when we we had a phone conversation before scheduling mm-hmm. this and you were talking about how when you go into uh, some of these homes, mm-hmm. you found out that, you know, because when you, when you do your audits and things to see, you know, how the person's living and things like that, mm-hmm. you notice that a lot of these women who say that, you know, they're, um, you know, they're single moms, there's actually a, another guy living in the home that's not the kid's father. Let's talk about that because we've never heard about, I mean, you know, about these things. All right. So, you know, sometimes when you go on YouTube, you hear a lot of stuff about, people not dating single moms um that's that's totally bull crap and I, I i will you know i will tell you right now so as a case manager you have children on your caseload in, your, in foster care and your job is to reunify the children back with their mother and before you can do that you have to go to the homes of these parents or a single mother to you know do a home assessment make sure that the house is in good order the house is clean you know so when i get there most of the time i've done over 200 home visits because i've been in this field for almost 10 years i've done over 200 home visits and when i do like especially in the foster care division when i do my home visit i usually um would like to know who else lives in the house and usually the single mom will say oh that's that's my boyfriend or that's my fiance then I'll have to do a background check on the guy to make sure that he's not a sex offender or he has any type of felonies because I'm returning children back to the home. But some of these uh, men are dating single mothers. I mean, it happens all the time. I, I've, at least I've done about 30 background checks on a lot of men who were dating some of the women on my case. Wow. So, mm-hmm. so two things we found out in, in this conversation. One, sisters are taken care of. Some people are. Mm -hmm. Guys that have a lot of kids, as long as they feel that the guy looks good, Mm -hmm. and on the back end, black men are taking care of children's kids in the house. Yes. And here's the thing. Let me me break it down to you, brother. When I go to court, because we have to go to court, right, to let the judge know, hey, this is what I think... The, the kids are ready to return back to mom. Um, sometimes the judge will ask, who's that gentleman in the courtroom? And the gentleman will get up and say, Your Honor, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be their stepfather. Or I'm, I'm a mom's fiance. I'm the mom's boyfriend. And sometimes the judge will be like, um, did, you, did you do a background check on him? I'll be like, yes, Your Honor. They're willing to take the children and, and take care of the children and stuff like that. But what I found out was a lot of these men are in these single mom homes because the mom has a lot of benefits when it comes to children. You know what I'm saying? Taxes, uh, TCA, housing assistance. Um, so most of the time, most of these men are home. 
in the house with the single women, sing, single mothers, because eventually they're going to get their children back and they're going to be a father. Okay, so let me make sure I understand this. A lot of those guys are dating those women they're, because they're they know. Mm -hmm. Say it again. They're, yeah, they're dating them because most of them, some some of these single mothers already have a child, maybe a, a little baby that wasn't uh, placed in foster care, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but there's some some of these single mothers still have benefits they're receiving from the government, and majority of the time is always a guy in the house, always a guy in the house. I mean, 90%. And there's social workers that are out there that, that will tell you this. And when they go to a home to do a home assessment, there's always a guy in the house. It could be in the daytime. It could be in the, in the afternoon or it could be in the evening. But those single mothers are dating men. And these men know that some of these mothers uh, have children and they're taking care of the children. Mm. And a lot, a lot of those guys... They're in the home full time taking care of the kids, getting those benefits. Full time, full time. But the government should not know. The government are uh, like, is they the women don't tell them that they have a guy in the house, you know, because of funding. Because you know they look at household when they want to give you funding, like medical assistance or maybe housing assistance. Like if you go on the projects, you know, like I know you heard of Freddie Gray, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. If you go on those projects, some of the they they go by household, so you can't have uh, a, a, a big like like if you say you have four people in the house, it has to be four people. You know, it has to be four people. So that's how they go by household number. Mm -hmm. Let me let me ask you this because I know you've been uh, you've been living in in the states for quite some time. Originally, you were you came from uh, from London, right? Or not. Yeah, we still in the UK. Correct. Okay, and and you've been in Baltimore. Baltimore is historically one of the you know a more popular African American dominated cities. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how do you feel that you know something like this can can be changed? Because if you have guys, because the, the 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 situation is this, and, and you you're, you're familiar with Black America now for, for a while, yes. where you know the talking points because you you live amongst. African Americans, and you, you might as well be one now because you know, you know everybody, you know how you know how you know the culture. Um, I'm Ados for life. Ados for life. What'd you say? I said I'm Ados for life. <laughs> so you know, you need because you need to be dealing be dealing with them out there in Baltimore. I, I, I Baltimore pretty rough. So now, as you're seeing that, because you're hearing black women say they don't want guys like this, you know. They don't want, uh, 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 you know, no woman will say, I want a guy that has seven kids by seven different women. I want a guy who's hardworking. I want a guy who is, uh, you know, is, is, is intelligent, who's smart. In Baltimore, you know, there's a lot of black men out there who do meet, don't meet those characteristics. You know, you mm -hmm. have Morgan State there. A lot of professional people are in Baltimore. Do you see a lot of professional black men who are what black women say they want? Do you think that the guys who are more attractive they have the upper advantage, even if they have seven kids by seven different women over yeah. the, the guys. Okay, go ahead and get on that. Yeah, some, some, a lot of uh, what working in my field, you're going to see a lot. Seriously, um, you're going to see a lot of men who uh, don't have anything who are, especially like I worked in social services, right? And you have women that are supervisors, women that are program managers. And most of their husbands and fiancés were people that were in jail selling drugs or in the streets. Most of them would pick them up after work. You know, they'd be driving their car all day. So yeah, sometimes a lot of a lot of women don't select uh, brothers who are like who have made it. They usually go for the. I guess you guys can call it the what Pookie and Ray Ray. Mm -hmm. Those terms, yeah. So they go for the Pookie and Ray Ray. Um, I don't know. I, I really, you know, don't know. But what my experience is, most of the women I work with at the job, most of them were dating men that's not even on their level. So wait a minute. We're not talking about just women who are on the government assistant. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes more sense dealing mm -hmm. with a guy who's Pookie and Ray Ray. Yeah. Now you're talking about the women who did go to Morgan State who are educated. 
they're dating yeah. guys similar. Yeah. And you you get this information from your coworkers because they will tell you like, oh, after work we're going to a party because um, you know her husband just came out of jail or her husband was locked up or whatever, whatever. But it happens a lot at the job because um, that's what that's what I was open to. That's what I was open to. That's what I saw because there was a lot of women. There was at least in in that building at least eighty percent women and only twenty percent men. But most, some of the women usually love dating guys in the, from the streets. That that was that was their, their that was their choice. Hmm. You know what? I, I mean, based on that, you know, with, with the guy that, um, because you know, basically, what, what I like about your channel is you focus on because a lot of some guys, you know, are going to be taller. Some guys hmm. are going to have you know advantages and looks, but eventually those looks will fade. And the good mm-hmm. thing I like about your channel is you're preparing men to mm-hmm. have other options to do things. You know, let's just say when, you know, because you're going to get old one day, right? And you're not going to be as appealing to, to, you know, to, to women. Why do you focus on on, on trying to help people with, with, with these side hustles and stuff? Because obviously you try to motivate this guy and you mm-hmm. put a lot of effort in. Um, I know it could be a little bit discouraging, but, you know, what, 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 you know what, were the, what are the benefits of, of, of you know, basically the side hustles and things like that, especially in today's um, economy, you know, talk about that for me. And as far as the importance of being able to, to run your own economies and, and, and get things starting going for you in today's world. Yeah. Um, because as you, as you, as you a witness to what happened over the last uh, few months, a lot, a lot of people lost jobs. Like people had good jobs. They lost jobs. They can't pay their rent. They can't take care of their family and they had no other choices. So my channel was just focused on how you can get by for the short term. You know what I'm saying? Um, Like I I met a guy who lost it. He was he was a waiter or something like that. And, you know, all the restaurants closed down. So I said, look, you can uh, get one of these Uber apps, drive Uber Eats for a while. And that's what he's doing full time right now. He's not even going back to work and he makes about twelve hundred a week. You know, driving, doing Uber Eats, and he's he's working like he's working, he's working it like a full time job until he gets back on his feet. But you know, my channel focuses on helping people, bringing people up, showing you how you can go out there to to to, to make something out of yourself because you can't trust some of these jobs. They will let you go in the heartbeat. You know, right. it will fire you quick. You know, um, I'm teaching people how to start businesses, how you can start a a, a business from scratch. Like, I mean, I'll give you a list of businesses that you can start with literally not more than two hundred dollars. The first business, cleaning business. Right now, a lot of buildings, commercial, uh, state buildings, they need cleaning. You know why? Because of COVID. Because of COVID, so they have cleaning right. contracts out there. So if you have a cleaning business, that's a contract that you can bid for. All right. Not only that, there's also moving business have a um, moving business, residential moving or commercial moving. That's a business that you can have. People post their companies on Craigslist every day. When I was moving from one one uh, house to another, I went on Craigslist and I saw a whole bunch of moving companies. And it's just average brothers with a with a with a truck and they moving and they and they out there they working. You know, that's another business. It's also government contracts that you can get. You know, cuz Sometimes state buildings, they they have like, um, they move from one building to another. So they put the contract out there and you bid for it, you know? So that's another side business that people can do. You can also have a training business, you know, whatever your specialty is, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. Okay. Like, uh, uh, G, you know, G Lowry, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I I like G Lowry. Yeah, exactly. He has uh, Technology G or uh, G Tech, right? And he's training people in IT, just like Keep It Techie. They're they're putting, they have their IT business. So it doesn't matter what you do. You can train people because somebody is going to pay you for your value. Okay? That's what I started with. I started with a trainer. As you can see, I have my, 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 my thing back here and I'm in my office. I started my own training business and I've been doing it for four years. And I was surprised how I, the, the amount of emails I was receiving 
for people to, uh, to they were reaching out to me to come there to train their staff i'm talking about 10 people 20 people you know white people asians spanish you know so there's many things that we can do mm-hmm. especially here in the united states in this right. country you know another business I, I was thinking of is consulting uh i had a young lady who uh worked in hr and she was she was complaining about racism and stuff like that and i said you have a master's in in human resources why don't you go start your own consulting company she started her own consulting company and right now she left the job she's working independently right now she got her own business Mm -hmm. you know writing sops writing you know um stuff helping companies out there just you know starting a business there's so many things that we can do there's so many government contracts available in your local and your state all you have to do is, 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 is check and do your research mm-hmm. like i just got awarded a, a government contract two days ago mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so you have to really go out there and get it so my channel focuses on people who are ready to get started and mm-hmm. and most people say look i, I want to start a business i don't have any money i have a full-time job but i, I don't want to get a loan well you can do Uber Eats, you can do DoorDash, you can do Instacart. There's little business, there's little side hustles out there that you can do to get that money that you need to um, to start your business. Right. You know, so there's opportunity out here. You don't, it doesn't, it's not a, it's not that difficult. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do an episode on, on that, guys. We do make sure you go to CM Training, go to the first, or is it, it's, K coaching is my my YouTube. K coaching YouTube channel. Go yes. to the first comment pinned to the top, guys. We're gonna do the uh, another episode on the five best hustles for black men. But I hope you guys have been. You know, this is a, a awesome, interesting story, which brings uh, homes a lot of points that a lot of a lot of black men, a lot of brothers in 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 America have been talking about for years, and we we, we know that it's true. So thank you, brother K coaching. Any any last okay. words you want to say before we uh go ahead. And I got I got a message to put out there for all the um, folks that like to dox people. You like to dox folks and like to look into people's backgrounds. There's another. There's a business for you. Private investigator. Go get your license. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Seriously. If you're gonna spend uh, a whole day looking into people's backgrounds, why don't you just go start a business and private investigate and start that as a business? They got government contracts out there for y'all too. You know, I mean, it's true. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, instead of trying to dox everybody on, on black YouTube, but but guys, thank you so much. And uh, as you know, the buffoon remains an all-time mic. Go to the first comment pinned to the top, and see you guys later. <laughs>